I've seen a lot of stuff about, you know, kind of lamenting the loss of in-person classes. And there's a lot of great things with in-person classes, but also like, I think there's a lot of really good stuff um, with the virtual classes too. And one of them, and perhaps the one that I've been most surprised by is your ability to take care of yourselves, right? There's a lot less um, pressure from the group and group momentum to carry you to places that aren't right for your body and use that to your advantage. Know that that is there. Uh, so for example, with the Penchamire Asana work that we're going to do today, if this isn't feeling great, immediately go to this one right? Don't even, don't even go through the mind trip of like, oh, well, I'm not doing enough and blah, blah, blah. Because all of those things come from like a not enough story, right? And that not enough story in the yoga tradition, they refer to it as the Anavamala. And mala means like an impurity, a film, a, a dust or grime that's on the mirror of the self. And Anavamala is the, the primary kind of clouding we have in our perception of ourselves and it's the clouding of lack and not enough and all the other malas the sense of like oh i can't do it i'm not good enough i'll never be able to achieve this that comes from a sense of lack and not enough and then the separation we create between ourselves and others that either trains us to be submissive and weak-willed or trains us to be um, power hungry and then forceful and um you know to exert power over others to try to fill that sense of not enough and can't accomplish so basically the tradition says that that all the kind of ills that we see within our own lives in the world uh stem from this sense of not enough and if we can recognize it and see it then we can do the um Basically, it's either you look outside of yourself to try to fill that hole of not enough or that hole of not enough serves as a call home, an invitation to spiritual connection, which is what that is meant to do is it's meant to call you back to spirit, call you back to the big oneness. But if you don't kind of get the message or if you misinterpret it, then we keep going out in the world and trying to find it with other people. Um, with material goods, with power, with money, whatever it is. Um, and that's actually kind of what we're doing today. We've been on this dance with duality for several weeks, and we did grounded lightness, and then we did the push and pull of muscular energy and organic energy. Last week, we did external rotation and internal rotation. And this week we're doing perhaps the most confusing of all, which is a combination, a dance of duality that I call core plus curve. It's maintaining the curve of your spine plus engaging your core. And I was practicing and, um, you know, the, the bookends of the week are so interesting because, for example, uh, Monday you get the rawest of the practices because I haven't kind of experimented with it on bodies yet, only in my own body. So you get this kind of raw version of the sequence, but the rawness has a realness and a power to it. By Friday, the end of the week, that's when you get kind of the most refined and most elegant version of the sequence. Um, and so I was on the mat and I was kind of going through my history with this particular dance of duality. And I came with an athlete's body, which included super tight psoas, which pulled my lumbar spine into more lower doses. So super tight quads, super tight hip flexors, lots of lumbar curve. And so I was in the crunchy scrunchy camp with back bends and everything hurt my back, right? Like, Cobra kind of hurt most days. Erdvidan Yurasana always hurt a lot. Camel could send me um, into like SI problems for a few days. So it wasn't like I had a few things to figure out. I had like every single back bend to figure out. And so for many years, I had to really back off the back bends, especially camel, camel 
and stay in that place of strength before actually putting my hands on my feet. Um, then I started to get some core strength and that was great. But then I went like the other way too far and I started tucking under the buttocks and to pull the belly back. And that ended up taking the curve out of the lower back, which was fine for a minute. But then that started to create its own problems and, and pain. Although that one, like I would have longer episodes of not back pain, right? So when it was too much curve, every back bend was crunchy, scrunchy, and problematic. Once I was in the land of like too much core and tucking the buttocks and sitting bones under, then things would be okay for usually like about three months. And then I would do something, usually a twist, with too much tucking under, and I would destabilize the sacrum, and then I'd be in the laying down to put pants on journey. So it took literally years for me to be able to navigate this relationship of natural lumbar curve plus deep core strength. Natural lumbar curve plus deep core strength. And that's what we're going to work on this week. And it's confusing because it actually requires you going in there and establishing the natural curve of the spine first, then being able to apply just enough core strength to keep it. The major misalignment is the spilling out of the ribs due to that belief that what you're doing is not enough, that you need more back bend that you need to go farther, that the pose isn't good enough as it is. And interesting because the ribs, in terms of the chakra system, is the third chakra related to personal power. So it's kind of like instead of being able to hold our own and hold our own strength, we end up kind of spilling out, not being able to have that container within ourselves. And I find this interesting because I've definitely seen that over the years, I've gotten more centered, more clear with boundaries, more established in my personal power. Whereas before it was like, I just didn't have any. And that would lead to like the hysterical breakdowns, right? And so it also becomes this dance of how do you be flexible and supple, but also strong and centered within yourself. And what an elegant combination for these kind of wild times. Supple and flexible, but strong and centered within yourself. So that is the work we're going to be doing this week. Again, major kind of dance of duality, natural lumbar curve plus deep core strength.